Attorney Fred Rispoli stated that one of the conceivable outcomes of the ongoing battle between the SEC and Ripple Labs might be Ripple's victory. But now the SEC wants to give them until January 15, 2025 to submit their major brief. And the SEC frequently requests continuances not only because it wishes to postpone matters, but also because it can be extremely overburdened by the number of pending cases, Attorney Fred Rispoli most recently said. Attorney Fred uh, Rispoli explained during his appearance as a guest on the Good Morning Crypto Show that appeals are largely just paperwork without fresh trials or supporting documentation. The opening opposition and reply brief are the three main documents each party files. The appeal in this instance consists of the cross appeal from Ripple and the SLVC. The court will set a time for oral arguments following these submissions. This should enable a panel of three judges to hear arguments from both sides. It's appeal action against Ripple. The SEC has also submitted a request for a deadline for its major brief, uh, according to Fred Rispoli. The SEC's request for an extension fits in with his anticipated appeal time frame. He anticipates that early hints about the justices' positions will come from oral arguments, which are anticipated to take place in September or October 2025. The case's ultimate result may be hinted at by these initial perceptions. However, if more extensions are permitted, which typically occurs within the Ninth Circuit, these dates may change even more. According to Rispoli, amicus papers will be crucial to the appeal. Third-party filings might provide fresh information that influences the case, according to him. Appellate judges ought to give them careful consideration, particularly since they are probably more numerous and significant than those at the district court level. Third parties that are not directly involved in the case can file an amicus brief, sometimes known as a friend of the court brief. Its purpose is to offer policy insights or more background information for certain arguments. This frequently influences important choices. Uh, in Supreme Court matters, amicus briefs are rather prevalent. Uh, amicus briefs are rarely used in trial or federal appellate proceedings. Crypto litigation, however, has defied that pattern. Comparatively speaking, Coinbase submitted six amicus briefs, Ripple filed 14, and Grayscale filed eight organizations. Uh, recently, Rispoli, a strong opponent of SEC chair Gary Gensler, also indicated that a leadership change may have a big effect on crypto regulation. Regardless of the outcome of the 2024 election, he conjectured that Gensler is almost assuredly leaving, making the selection of his successor crucial to the future of the sector. Rispoli responded that a well-defined statute would probably have that impact when asked if new legislation may make the SEC's appeal moot. Ripple's legal team would submit a notice of additional authority to the Second Circuit claiming that the new law is relevant to their case if Congress approves crypto legislation before the end of the year with effect from January 1, 2025. A new report claims that Ripple's value has risen to $1,426. This is a noteworthy milestone that might be explained by the possibility of acceptance by 30 of global banking institutions. According to certain reports, Ripple collaborates with almost one-third of the universities worldwide. This represents a major chunk of the financial sector. However, the question that arises is whether or not these financial institutions are utilizing Ripple to the most extent possible. By the end of March, Ripple anticipates becoming public, which might result in a price increase of $8.97 in little over a month due to the gain. It is anticipated that Ripple will go public by the end of March, roughly Four file deposits made through overseas accounts and international financial institutions are thought to be the exclusive responsibility of SPI holdings. SB might account for a significant four of the 30 of the global banking industry that is considering implementing Ripple's technology based on the facts provided. Additionally, Ripple and the Brazilian Central Bank have formed a significant collaboration in Brazil where Ripple has introduced its on-demand liquidity services. This indicates how dedicated the business is to the Brazilian market. Curta Brace countries decide they wish to collaborate with Ripple. This collaboration might have some very important consequences. It is difficult to overestimate the importance of the XRP ledger in this specific setting, since it is a crucial aspect of the financial institution's dynamic environment. As the next bull market approaches, the promise of Ripple technology becomes more apparent. Given that the bull market is getting closer, this is important. Uh, according to the Federal Reserve's announcement, Ripple and XLM can play important roles in supporting the blockchain that will form the basis of their next Fed now payment infrastructure. To complete the process of smoothly turning fiat money into stable currencies, our partnership with Metal Blockchain is an essential step. 
Through our efforts, the gap between the decentralized financial sector and traditional banking institutions will be significantly reduced. It is already possible for Americans to make domestic payments quickly and almost entirely using digital uh, Bitcoin wallets or third-party apps like Venmo and PayPal. The FedNow effort is spearheaded by the Federal Reserve and Ripple, a leading provider of distributed ledger technology and cross-border payment solutions, is preparing to play a significant role in the project. The FedNow service is going to cause a significant change in this landscape, and Ripple will be there to contribute to that change. Since 30% of banks worldwide have started to accept Ripple, the cryptocurrency's value has skyrocketed to $1,427. This is a consequence of these institutions using Ripple. 30% of global financial institutions are now using blockchain technology to perform international transactions as a direct result of these advancements. This is a perfect example of how blockchain technology and the financial industry may be disruptive. This acceptance has caused XRP's price to soar to previously unheard of levels of market capitalization, indicating that there is a huge demand for the cryptocurrency. This 30% barrier is about to be broken by XRP's market penetration, indicating that even greater acceptance is taking place across the board in the global financial industry. One coin that has been exchanged on cryptocurrency platforms is XRP. Reports indicate that the value of XRP transactions will potentially surpass $1.2 quadrillion, leading to an increase in the cryptocurrency's notional price of above $10,000. Financial institutions are starting to use the XRP ledger and the digital assets it contains more, which is a significant change and a remarkable development. This action signifies a noteworthy advancement. A report that was just released revealed that Ripple Labs is not only considering, but actively acquiring XRP. The idea that Ripple is about to start a repurchase program is no longer only a rumor. Rather, it is turning into a reality that is happening faster than anybody could have predicted. The inclusion of XRP as a fundamental component of international payment systems is of great importance to the Fed. The reason for this is that there are estimates that suggest the value of XRP might soar to between $112,000 and $22,000 per coin, right after WIT is accepted by central banks worldwide. This pattern is supported by data provided by Google, which reaffirms the Fed's intention to adopt XRP because of its unmatched potential as a global payment method. Ripple and XRP have reached a major milestone as a result of these accomplishments. This puts them at the forefront of financial innovation and might change how payments are made throughout the world. This milestone has been achieved by XRP and Ripple. The Federal Reserve has had its sights set on XRP for a while now, and they have been developing a bold strategy that was first anticipated to be implemented by the end of 2019. Furthermore, they have been developing this idea for a while. XRP is currently included among the primary currencies that central banks and governments issue, the US dollar, the euro, the British pound, and the Canadian dollar are some examples of these currencies. As per other disclosures, the Federal Reserve plans to utilize Google Reader's insights on XRP digital assets extensively. One of the people who has offered these insights with suggestions is Kikuchi, a government official who advocates for the creation of a side chain using XRP's public chain. The head of the U.S. Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, has made it plain that large sums of money are now being invested in building new independent settlement systems in the United States. This implies that the financial technology and digital assets sectors are about to enter a phase marked by substantial transformation. 